Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dwar and today I want to talk about my new haircut. Oh no, just kidding, that's not what I want to talk about. Today I want to talk about INFJs and INTPs. What I've found is that some people, they fall on the spectrum of being deeply self-critical, but at the same time deeply idealizing the people around them, while other types fall in the spectrum of being kind of critical and skeptical of other people, while sometimes uh, building up a false delusional self-image. And okay, INFJs and INTPs are great to contrast in this video because of this. INFJs tend to be people that due to their positive nature of extroverted feeling and their more negative nature or attitude towards introverted thinking, people that tend to struggle with uh, some degree of self-criticism and some degree of skepticism towards yourself and some degree of distrust towards yourself. While INTPs tend to be people that generally have quite high expectations for themselves. INTPs expect themselves to be quite intelligent and talented people and they expect themselves to be quite capable of handling different situations and managing new environments. That's also why uh, INTPs on the contrasting end tend to be kind of distrustful of other people. INTPs can find that other people are stupid or slow or not able to keep up with them. INTPs can feel that other people are constantly making mistakes or going back on their word. And so INTPs can come off as slightly reserved to new people. INFJs uh, and INTPs are, what I've found, not the same kind of introverts where INTPs are more reserved, INFJs are more ambiverted. So there might be a relationship here because of this. INFJs, because they see people quite highly, because INFJs tend to think of people in quite positive regard, uh, and because they tend to think of themselves in quite negative regard, can feel a need to uh, go out into the world to get their mind in a more positive mental frame. When an INFJ spends much time on their own, they become caught in their own thoughts and their own brooding and negativity. It's constantly, oh, I should fix this about myself. I need to do that differently. I'm weak. I'm bad. I should be more this. I should be more that. In fact, I found a lot of the time when I was younger, I would escape into politics and into community work and activists and helping other people. And I would spend so much energy and I would pour myself so much into that. And when I come home, I'd feel absolutely miserable. When I came home and I had a minute to myself, I would go completely dark. I would change from that positive, loving, compassionate uh, version of myself to a uh, truly uh, almost self-hating version of myself, constantly going down on every bad decision I made and every foolish thing I did, constantly thinking about, oh, I need to fix that about myself. That's not good enough. That's not right. People don't like that about me. People don't like me. You know, I would go into that spiral. And that's so interesting because uh, I have friends that... Uh, uh, I have INTJ friends that would say that I seem to like everyone I meet and I think there is a degree of truth to that. I seem to like every single person that I meet. I seem to have a positive feeling towards other people. I naturally see people in their brightest light and their best version of themselves. I see people uh, as good and as kind and as sweet and as thoughtful and as warm and as uh, lovable and I so naturally just find myself getting attached to other people quite easily because of this. Now it's interesting then that I can't think of myself in that way and that for myself that I find myself so constantly uh, preoccupied with every bad thing I have and every single flaw I can think of and every single issue that I might have in my life. And this is also interesting when you think about INTPs, because when you study INTPs, you'll find a lot of time INTPs struggle with the fact that they think themselves to be so talented and so smart and so uh, bright, but then at the same time, they struggle to get validation from other people. They struggle at work with bosses that don't appreciate them for their gifts and abilities, by teachers that don't give them the resources they need to succeed, by uh, friends and family members who don't support them in their passions and in their hobbies. As an INTP, it's easy to feel like I am so smart, but I'm not still given the chance to succeed and I'm still not 
uh, allowed to do things my way and even if I know I'm right and even if I know I have the right answer people don't believe that I have the right answer they don't trust me in this regard so as an INTP there can be almost like this kind of uh, interesting thing that happens because okay for an INFJ if an INFJ is ever shown appreciation by other people if other people come to me and they say oh Eric I like that about you and I think this is great and I think that's amazing it's like that for me it's almost like a happy accident wow I did something nice it must have been an accident or it must have been uh, can, it can't have been on purpose it must have been uh, just by mistake or it must have been actually bad and then or it could have been better it should have been better than what it was uh, sure it was nice but it could have been better I could have done it a lot better than what I thought I did so, uh, it's uh, how you experience and deal with feedback and positive validation is so different. For an INTP, when other people compliment them, it's like, wow, they actually saw that I did it good. They actually realized, finally, that I am bright. They actually understood and respected my talents and abilities. They finally complimented me on what I did and they finally saw me. They finally uh, realized what the talents I have and what potential I have. And it's like, huh, oh, people can see me. That's uh, so, that's such a different reaction. Ultimately, um, INFJs, they are different kind of introverts from INTPs. INFJs fall more into the protector role, caring for and nurturing other people, and pushing themselves, sh shaping themselves uh, to be something that can protect other people. So you spend so much time uh, beating down on yourself in order to build up yourself, in order to make yourself strong enough to care for other people. INTPs, they are more like healers. <laughs> That's quite interesting because they're uh, introverted thinking types. They're fixers. They, they just want to make things better. They, they want to make you better. They want to make themselves better. But they love that process and they, it's, not a, it's not a self critical process. It's not a negative process. It's just a process of coaching yourself and going like, oh, I can fix that. And I can change that. And I can make that better. And for me, as an INFJ, that's just so foreign because as an INFJ, it's a process that's a lot more like, damn it, why did I do that? And why couldn't I have done that? And why couldn't I have done this differently? And why didn't I make that better? <laughs> so uh, it's quite refreshing to see an INTP's approach on it because maybe that's what I should try to feel as well. I should also try to find joy in improving myself and bettering myself. And I shouldn't just see it as work or effort or um, something that's never going to be good enough. Because, um, yeah, you need to be kind to yourself. Ultimately, you do need to be kind to yourself. And while it's good to be critical of yourself, it's never good to hate yourself or to be negative to yourself or to hurt yourself. You should always seek to build yourself up. Thank you guys for watching and see you all in the next video.